I would like to welcome you to today's workshop named uh, Diversity and Inclusion Forum uh, for the Support of Families and Young Talents. We are here at the Spielberg Office Center premises and we are being hosted by Atlas Copco Services. I would like to welcome you in the room and also uh, you uh, at the stream uh, who will be who will also get involved. My name is Petr Bittner. I am a journalist and uh, my um, contributions uh, are published in Reflex and I am a co co-owner of uh, the Škrty uh, podcast, uh, and I am also uh, one of the bearers uh, of the uh, award uh, Genderman of the Year. This is not that I would like to boast about, but uh, these are facts. About today's program, I'm going to invite the representative of the organizer and the main partners to take the floor after that um, uh, the the representatives of business and business as společnost, uh, who will introduce uh, the diversity and inclusion masterclass, uh, including the open tools for the employers. At uh, about 9.50 approximately, maybe slightly delayed, there will be the first panel. We will have a, three, a female panel, uh, three representative of COPCO services and uh, Atlas services, and uh, they will uh, be discussing about the harmonization, about the, uh, the, uh, the support of young talents uh, at Atlas COPCO. They will speak about the program for young talents. Then we will have a short break. Uh, the, then there will be uh, the second panel. There will be the good practice shared by the representatives of uh, Velox company, Thermo Fisher, Scientific and Continental and Parum. Uh, they, these two panels will provide space for you to uh, ask questions uh, or we will have uh, a possibility to use also Slido. Hopefully all your questions will be answered. Without uh, any delays, I would like to uh, ask uh, Roman Pavloshek, who is the general manager of Atlas Copco Services, to take the floor. Good morning. Uh, can you all hear me well? Hopefully, yes. I would like to welcome you once again on behalf of Atlas Copco Services. My name is Roman Pavloshek. I am the general manager. I am in charge of the Central of Financial Services that we have built here at Holandska. Atlas Copco is uh, a uh, is the company that I would like to uh, introduce to you. It is a, a, an international company originally from Sweden and uh, it is uh, in about 180 countries of the world. Uh, it has over 40,000 employees and uh, it is a large global company. Today, uh, this year, we are celebrating 150th anniversary. So it's been 150 years, um, so our tradition is very long. During these years, uh, the company has uh, gone through uh, major development. And now uh, it is the manufacturing company, so over half of the income is uh, from compressor technology. Then uh, the next one is the vacuum technology. These are the biggest business areas. Then there are two smaller ones. One is um, the supply chain for automotive and power technique. So there are kind of four business areas at Last Copco is uh, involved in. And we in Brno, we are mainly the uh, the shared service center, uh, the business services, um, and uh, we are supporting the companies in the uh, in the, com uh, the the companies within the uh, the uh, Atlas Copco. We mainly uh, provide financial services, but uh, in the uh, we are now growing into the support of uh, sales and IT technologies. So. We have very great diversity also in this area. As far as this center is concerned, it will um, have been uh, 15 years in existence. Atlas Copco uh, started uh, working with this 10 years ago when they bought the Edwards company, which uh, set it up. 
So we have a few anniversaries, uh, anniversaries to celebrate uh, this year, and uh, there are a lot of things that we do will are for the people who work uh, in our company, who will want to work for our company, and also for the community as a whole. And we will say more um, during today's uh, program. And I will ask my colleagues uh, to say a few words as well. That's um, all on my behalf. And now Mr. Radek Nešleha, who is the chief executive of the company. I would also like to welcome you all here. And uh, I'd like to say um, for me and also my colleagues who uh, work in the area of diversity and inclusion. So I'd like to say that we are very much honored that you can be here with us in these um, on these premises, either live or uh, on stream. We joined diversity charter uh, about one year ago. I. I uh, signed uh, in the chambers of Chamber of Deputies uh, the uh, diversity charter, and the reason why we w did it uh, was that we wanted to uh, join the values that we all share. All the, these values uh, in the company uh, with, that we work in Atlas Copco, such uh, uh, values are um, quite uh, commonplace. Uh, this uh, company has been in the market uh, for 150 years, and business uh, uh, business uh, pro business and diversity charter charter are our values as well. But we wanted to declare it in public, and we wanted to take the opportunity to learn from you what we can do better because it is important for us and not everybody perceives it in the same way as we do. That's why it is a great honor for me that I can be, uh, meet you here. Thank Mr. Stern that we could have organized it. I'd like to thank you for uh, and um, uh, I'm looking forward to this event. Uh, all of you who are here one month ago, um, uh, we opened three floors of our refurbished um, uh, offices and uh, we are going to speak about people and people have to work somewhere. In my opinion, these are very nice premises, very uh, beautiful offices. So I would like to take you through them to show them to you so that you can look uh, how our people work here. Thank you. Now I'd like to uh, ask uh, Pavel Stern, who is uh, the director of uh, Business Prospolechnost Company. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you to today's meeting at the uh, Diversity and Inclusion Forum on these beautiful premises of Atlas Copco with an, an stunning view of Brno. I would like to uh, thank uh, Atlas Copco Company and uh, the entire team uh, which has been preparing this forum. And uh, I'd like to thank them for the opportunity to organize uh, this uh, workshop uh, or forum. Today's forum is uh, a continuing series of uh, the topics uh, of diversity and inclusion masterclass, which is uh, which is uh, organized by a uh, business prospolechnost company. And the goal of it is to expand the awareness of the topics and uh, current trends of diversity and inclusion and to address new employee employers in the Czech Republic uh, through experienced uh, and uh, important uh, companies and signatories of uh, diversity charter who will share their, their good practice. This is going to be uh, done by uh, Atlas, uh, Com Com Atlas Copco, by Kindril uh, Scientific Barum Continental and Velax companies. This topic is uh, pretty broad, uh, and its main topic is uh, the support of young talents and the support of uh, um, parents, uh, parents um, uh, at work and support of families. 
has already organized uh, one of our most important events um, uh, at uh, a year, uh, which was uh, called Mothers and Fathers Are Welcome. It was the eighth uh, year of the conference. Uh, this time it was um, focused on prejudice and barriers which uh, prevent uh, parents, uh, mainly the mothers, uh, to um, to fit uh, mm, uh, fit uh, their motherhood and uh, uh, career growth uh, together. And we also organized the career um, survey and we also found found out, uh, among other things, that six out of uh, ten of the responders of uh, mothers uh, answered uh, that they systematically have to face prejudice uh, concerning the fact that it is not possible to to uh, put to match uh, motherhood and career growth, and uh, that uh, children should not be um, should not be um, put uh, to the uh, to some um, uh, other organizations other than family. Um, before they are before three years of age. So the prejudice and barriers are major uh, obstacles in further development. And for example, Atlas Copco and other companies who are the ambassadors of uh, uh, the new trends, uh, they are opening completely new uh, topics which concerns uh, parenthood, the position of uh, women in the um, labor market, uh, and putting together uh, things which which uh, seem no, not to be able to be put together. So we are going to also touch upon these topics uh, and we are going to hear the good practice from Atlas Copco and other companies. Thank you, Pavel. And I guess I'll have to invite him over once more, together with Camilla, another representative of uh, Business Full Society, to introduce a few more elements of um, our Diversity and Inclusion Forum Masterclass. We're very pleased to be here today and to speak about the project um, funded by the EU um, Diversity and Inclusion Masterclass. It's a set of open tools which we would like to offer to all employers in the Czech Republic and abroad because some of the tools will be in English as well. And we want to strengthen the perception of diversity, open the topics, the themes, and offer the employers some tools how to introduce diversity, how to approach it, and um, with the help of the companies such as those present today, offer the good practice and inspiration how to support diversity in their businesses. The project has several parts. We will be offering an analytical tool which will help the employers to identify the key areas where they are at in diversity and inclusion and what topics can they open. We will show you the compass, but we'll introduce it in a minute. And then we have several other open tools, such as videos, podcasts, and also a handbook after the masterclass, where there are chapters focused on the different um, areas on diversity with inspiration and practice of our um, well-proven companies. So now I would like to give the floor to Pavel. Just briefly about the open tools. The diversity compass is a simplified version of our analytical tool, which you probably know under the title DISA, D-I-S-A. It's a simpler form, but it's a form which is already online and available. And after filling out, which takes place about two hours after getting all the um, information together, provides you with a basic indicative answer uh, on the current situation of diversity and inclusion in the given company. We'll just show you a few pictures. The tool is prepared and it will be available on our website, diversity, diversi diversitat.cz. 
um, after the introduction, which gives you an insight, some um, information, what type of information they will need in order to fill out the questionnaire, and how will the um, evaluation look like. It's a project, which means that the questionnaire is just step one. And the results then point one to further recommendations, such as the videos, a series of six videos and podcasts with ambassadors, the uh, signatories of the diversity charter um, on the current trending topics, plus the um, guide through the masterclass. The videos are also complete. So they will be available online of the um, Business for Society company. We will just show you a few of the um, inside bits of the form. There are some identification uh, things or di identification data that is filled out. Four key areas regarding diversity. You see some questions here. Could you please click number four, Camilla, or three, actually? The questionnaire is actually working, so you can actually open it, look at it yourself. Every responder can read through it and plan what uh, information will they need to fill it out and there's the diversity strategy and last but not least support for the development of uh, the diversity strategy there is the result at the end We'll show you the result here on the screen. This is one of the types of output in the second key category. There's a little clock that shows you what score you've reached or the company has reached. In this case, it's 85%, which is an indication in a given area and some recommendations for the company what they could do to develop their diversity and inclusion topics. These are some graphs that show a reflection of the questions regarding the age structure in the company, various benefits, etc. This is how it's shown in the graphs. The questionnaire exists also in English which means you can work with it in either language. It's available to the companies that function entirely in English. And it's a questionnaire for companies that are at the beginning, at the start with diversity. It's not a questionnaire for the signatories of the charter. For them, we've got the DISA questionnaire. And what we expect or hope is that this simple form, which is easily done, will give you, provide you with a quick example and should perhaps um, invite greater interest in the uh, topics of diversity and inclusion in the workplace, give an insight uh, into what the company is like from the inside and it provides a good feedback on this, on this, uh, in this perspective. So it's a reduction of the DISA um, questionnaire in order to attract um, the interest of a broader spectrum of employers. We feel that it seems to be working because during the last two years when this project has been running and we've been uh, implementing various events for the project, to our great um, pleasure, the number of signatories um, of the diversity charter has been increasing we are very pleased about it, although humble at the same time. So this is as much about the tools, unless you want to actually add something, Camilla. I think this is what we wanted to say in brief. 
so that you have an idea what the project is about. Most of those things are almost complete, just a final phase. We're just finalizing the guides. But you nearly all complete already and available to all the um, employer employers, not just yourselves, but anywhere. Something more about the context. Uh, the workshop is part of the project today and aims to promote this topic of supporting parents and young talents in the workplace. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Pavel and Camilla. At this point, we could start with the first panel with a uh, a uh, triscle of uh, participants from different companies who are going to uh, introduce various tools um, they use in the company with the aim of supporting parents and diversity in the company. So the ladies are actually going to go one by one. I would like to who's going to uh, introduce the area from her perspective. She's the Integration Process Manager in Finance from Atlas Copco. Good morning. I've never held a microphone before, so I hope I'll manage. Welcome. My name is Magda and I work as an Integration Manager in Atlas Copco and I integrate processes but also people. And it's been two years when my colleague Leona from HR was looking for a diversity champion and no one was really into it very much. We never, no one really knew what would that be about uh, and that we would perhaps join some sort of meeting once in a blue moon. But ultimately it developed into uh, a very broad um, area of um, activities that we cooperate on. In the two years, we've done a lot, and you can see that it is not uh, only about me and about Leona, but our diversity team has uh, consists of uh, many people, not only in Brno, but also in China, in Korea, in India. And we uh, make every effort to promote the ideas of um, uh, inclusion and diversity in all financial centers. Uh, we, um, we think that uh, diversity should not be only of the issue of HR and we should be including all people from our company who are interested in it and who feel for it. So we uh, we make effort to nominate diversity champions uh, from the ranks of our employees. I must say that not all the activities can be done together uh, across the world, but there are some activities where it can be done. Uh, recently, we together celebrated the International Women's Day, but, day, but uh, there are some topics which are, are much more sensitive and uh, uh, they are still not um, developed uh, well in uh, all the countries uh, that we could promote them but we we don't want to choose any forceful way so we only work uh, on some topics uh, with our Brno team but it is definitely important to connect uh, all these activities uh, through the finances uh, so that um, we have uh, a meaningful frame for this reason we also uh, created a strategy So first of all, we had uh, a pilot strategy uh, and we decided to put in there the, uh, the, the areas that we had already worked on or but then we realized uh, that uh, promoting the ideas of diversity and inclusion is a long-term matter. So we uh, developed uh, the next strategy for uh, the next three years, not only for one year, and we tried to uh, fit it on uh, our main topics, uh, which are cascaded to us uh, from the top about our business area. and. Uh, 
Uh, these four uh, four pillars uh, are the income are the outcome of those. Number one is the representation of women in our uh, company. We are a manufacturing company, so this percentage is n still not as high as we would imagine. So our goal is by. 2030 to have at least 30 uh, percent of women across our organization but we do the diversity for finances for the finance area so we have already exceeded this uh, target twice uh, so it is not so much uh, for us to attract uh, the women into the financial centers but we want to create the conditions for women to be happy to work for us and to provide to them the best conditions. Uh, the uh, the most difficult area, uh, time for the woman is when she decides to have a child and to go to the uh, maternity leave and uh, to put it together with uh, their carriers. Uh, the, in most cases, uh, women still uh, are um, uh, those who uh, who uh, cover the parently, parental leave uh, and uh, we try to do things uh, um, and offer things so that for them it is m most comfortable to um, f to fit in the career and uh, the uh, working life and and the family life. The second pillar is uh, about. Uh, our realizing that uh, teams uh, are teams uh, consist of people who have different histories, different ideas, different uh, ages, origins, uh, ways of uh, thinking, and it is not desirable to only recruit uh, uh, some the people. Uh, with uh, who can fit in a close box, uh, but we should uh, recruit also people who uh, may bring some uh, interesting things into our company. This we should bear in mind when we compile the teams uh, and I like most uh, the third pillar which is very important uh, and uh, in, in connected with the diversity so it's not only to have the people but also to provide good conditions for them to feel good here and to work here well so in order for us to um, we need to make sure that if we have a, a person with a handicap so we must make sure that uh, we are able to employ them. We can employ young, old uh, people of uh, any any race, any color, or from any state, and we need to make sure that we have such uh, conditions here. And we want to provide the environment where a colleague who has uh, a boyfriend, uh, not a girlfriend, uh, uh, that um, a male colleague. Uh, so we should provide the environment uh, where nobody uh, judges him at work. Uh, so this was the this is the pillar about prejudice, and it is not uh, about uh, eliminating the prejudice, but uh, because it's not possible uh, so much. Uh, but we should realize uh, that we have the prejudice that we uh, and we should minimize them, and we should be aware uh, what our considerations in some situations are, and we need to make effort to respond in a different way. For all these pillars, we have set up uh, specific uh, activities which we had worked uh, with, uh, worked on with the teams. We are for um, active women here in Brno, so we want to implement everything really quickly and to see a real, uh, real um, goals behind us, achieved goals. But uh, we realized that we also needed to communicate about all those things. So we 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 uh, started to publish. Uh, the newsletter and where we inform about uh, the activities in our company uh, which uh, is also related to HR and important events in our company within this and within the communication, we made effort uh, after the year of our activities to create a questionnaire and ask uh, asked our employees uh, about whether uh, they are interested in what 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 we are doing. So that uh, we found um, 
uh, what uh, other topics we should be including in the new strategy. Uh, the questionnaire was uh, closely related to HR or, and, for example, things like work-life balance and uh, other ones. Uh, and um, our employees uh, appreciate uh, that we support uh, kindergartens, uh, that we support the careers of young people. We were very pleasantly um, surprised that also some uh, volunteering is uh, something that uh, people are not bothered about and uh, they like it and they like that the company focuses on this. And on the other hand, uh, they were the things that they had not uh, paid attention so much, uh, such as the LGBT plus uh, and the career of um, older uh, people or the support uh, of people who take care of uh, their of their parents, grandparents, uh, and it is the same as care for children. It is a very demanding thing, and uh, we would like this forum to enable us to share these areas uh, where we think that we do well, and but we would also want to learn from you in what way we should uh, grasp the areas which we have not uh, developed so well and uh, we would be very happy if you can show us uh, the path. But first of all, we would like to speak about what we are able to do and what we like, what we what we are um, have achieved, and so I would like to ask Leona Buchtová to speak about uh, uh, cooperation uh, with universities and about kindergartens. Uh, good um, morning to everybody. I have worked um, uh, f for Atlas Copco for three years, and uh, I am an HR manager. And as Magda has said, so diversity in every company should not be only considered by the HR area, but uh, it should be supported by everybody, by the managers, by team leaders, and uh, all those who uh, mainly impact uh, our teams. Uh, and. Uh, we, I appreciate and they appreciate if uh, employees uh, with uh, standard roles uh, get involved uh, also in these activities because they usually bring the best ideas and uh, they are things that uh, they really would like to have. Uh, so if any manager comes uh, with uh, an idea, so this idea usually uh, get, gets developed uh, and uh, is uh, implemented. First of all, I would like to show you the video with the voice of our people. We made a video with the ladies, with women from our company on parental leave. So I would like to show it to you now. Atlas Copco se věnují příchozím fakturám, zaučtovávám je a komunikují s dodavateli v případě nějakých nejasností. Já pracuji na pozici P2P a zpracovávám faktury pro oblast Česká republika, Slovensko, Maďarsko a Polsko. Když děti jsou v klidu a spící, tak si sednu k počítači a za, za účtu pár faktur, komunikuji se svým týmem, abych úplně nevypadla z toho flow. Přijdu do práce, zapnu počítač, podívám se, co mi přišlo za e-maily, kolik mi přišlo faktur a začnu je zpracovávat. A má vlastně zkrácený úvazek na 6 hodin, což je pro mě úplně ideální vlastně spojit rodiny a pracovní život. Na odchod na rodičovskou mi nejvíc pomohlo to, že jsem se měla kam vrátit, to bylo hrozně příjemné a zároveň i ta podpora celého týmu a vlastně de facto celého patra a vůbec jsem z toho nakonec neměla strach. U nás se všechno točí kolem baseballu, takže škola, úkoly, baseball a pořád dokola. 
firmní atmosféry. Ta atmosféra, netoxické pracovní prostředí, úplně k nezaplacení záležitost. Za tu dobu, co jsou tady, tak se dá říct, že jsem nepotkala nikoho, kdo by byl naštvaný. Všichni fakt táhneme za jedno lano a je to hrozně příjemné. Já se do práce těším. To byl hlas našich mateřin. So, uh, this was the voice of our mums who cooperate with us. And I will speak further about the programs that we've prepared for them. Why maternity women? We have around 70% women in our service center. It's a huge percentage. And currently, around 100 of them are on parental leave, which means it's a huge number of women. And our goal was to for them to keep in touch with us, ideally, if they wish to. Not everyone wants it. Someone just wants to really get out of everything for three years, cut off and focus only on children. But those women, including one dad, actually, who went on parental leave, um, who want to remain in touch and we wanted to create the opportunity for them to make it possible. We created a Facebook platform for them, which is what we started with because not everyone has company email. Um, whoever wants to keep it, they can. If they don't want it, they don't have to. So we created a Facebook platform where we started communicating and uh, we started preparing the activities. What led us to this as well was that was our effort to enable the mothers who want to work during their parental leave to have this opportunity so that they wouldn't have to leave completely and come back in two to three years, but that the time, even a few hours per week, um, that they would be able to work because it's good for them. They keep in touch with the company, uh, but it's also great for the company because you probably all know, especially those of you who are HRs, it's not quite simple to find people on the market who are qualified enough and it helps us quite a lot when people can have these, um, they can have these uh, part-time jobs. They are trained and they will help us with what we need. During that time when they're at Mums often complain that they don't have the chance to educate themselves, to attend courses, English courses, for example, or something. So we don't stop the program for them. We don't stop the benefits at the point when they leave to uh, be at home with kids. But we go on. In our finance department, for example, we have, the, we have a training um, finance program and the mums can still study they can still make use of the benefits same uh, with the language courses everything goes on uninterrupted for them we have so many programs already you can see just a few pictures from our events because we meet uh, here in the sky club regularly from time to time it just changes into a kindergarten here and we just close the terrace make everything extremely safe you would probably find a lot of the toys in the cupboards here because it just really changes into a kids club here and we meet but we also meet outside in various gardens environmental centers etc we also had a, an event in a family park and so on and we focus um, on the mums with children up to three years because after that they go back to work be it part-time but they spend more time with us then there are so many activities here that we decided to write them all down and present our activities uh, also on the labor market. But we also want to show them to our employees because very often they're not aware of all these things that are happening here and how many activities take place. So we've actually presented the family program in a sort of statement uh, where we can officially declare that the company focuses on these topics and that it offers them. When we look at what what is actually going on, what is already in place, I spoke about the Facebook group. We have a 
huge platform for all those hundred mums who are coming and going, joining the group and leaving. We communicate about most of the events there um, to make sure that they have enough information. We have regular meetings at least once every quarter of, of a year. We meet with the mums and their children. We have some topics for mums alone. We had, for example, a first aid in babies with some practical um, experience, how to react in a situation when the child is really endangered um, in life or if they have an injury, to make sure that the mum knows how to act. So there was an educational event of this type. What is very important and uh, what we also focus on and what I've already mentioned is the gradual re-entry to work. Some mums don't actually leave altogether. They just work very briefly after giving birth or even during their maternity leave, which begins before giving birth. And even uh, 0 0.1 part-time, so just a few hours per month up to the half um, 0.5 um possibilities and then the mums who can work part-time, 0.5, are already working sometimes here in the workplace. A huge problem in Brno is where to put the child if I want to work because the video looked lovely and ideally but not always the mums have a chance to work with their child and concentrate on work so we decided to try and do something to make sure that the mums would actually get to work in reality if they wish. Which means we are cooperating with Lochka. It's an organization that runs children's groups uh, in different places where the mums can actually bring their children and we enable them to do so. And at the same time, the mums who do not want, who have their own kindergarten or crash where they bring their child near their house, we actually contribute to covering these fees. About a year ago, we introduced this as a pilot program. There was huge interest in this, of course, and it's really increased the number of mums who've really um, come back to work, even part-time. We have lots of various well-being programs that we offer. We invite the mums gradually when we have some events for employees. We never forget to invite them, the Christmas party, the sports day, etc. The first aid course uh, I've already mentioned and we definitely want to keep going. I hope I haven't forgotten anything important. My colleague has already mentioned that we have... Uh, uh, Another sensitive topic, um, which is the LGBT topic. We don't want to push people into something that might not be quite natural for them. There are people who don't mind speaking about their personal life, perhaps uh, letting people know about their orientation, but then there are people who don't want to speak about it, they want to, want to publicize it, they don't want this community to be highlighted and especially not at work. What we've done, first thing, was that for those who are parents and live in a common household as non-biological parents with same orientation parents, We've um, straightened the internal regulations to enable them to actually have access to all the benefits as all parents do, which is really great because if they live in a common household, two moms, then the other one can actually have two weeks parental leave after the birth of the child and that's great help for them. At the same time, we don't scream it in, out into the world and they really appreciated the feedback that we have from one mother that she was really mm, appreciative of this. Not just to think about the smallest ones, which of course makes us tend to do that uh, mostly. The group is really important for us. We've also organized 
an event for the uh, bigger kids. We've actually organized a summer camp here directly in the Sky Club. Every group had 20 children. We participated in it, all of us. We had to move the kids into the restaurant and back. So from the 20th floor, it wasn't exactly the easiest thing, but nonetheless, we enjoyed it very much. Our employees enjoyed it too. It was quite uh, interesting for them to come to work in the morning, leave the kids here. It was including English lessons, so all the teachers spoke English. It was also for our expats who have children here. And the children also learned something. We also try to find some outdoor activities, which isn't exactly ideal, as you can see around here. Um, and the camp was so successful that this year we're going on. We're repeating one week in July and one week in August. And again, we have 40 children from the company who will be enjoying their day camp here with us. When the children grow up, or even those children that we are interested in as a company, we will go on to topic number two, which I would like to mention, and that is how we work with early career, with starting up with our students who are at the beginning of their professional life, what we offer to them and how it is set in our official partnering together with Masaryk University, with the um, Faculty of Economics and Management. I could perhaps just mention how a true partnership with the university can work and what we can get, what you can get if you decide to go for it. We started cooperating with Masaryk University relatively recently. I think this uh, idea came about a year and a half ago approximately when we actually signed the uh, diversity charter we also signed the partnership with Masaryk University and that meant quite a big bite of activity and duties for us and I think Petra from HR will confirm that at one point there was quite a bit too much to do at some point but but we've dealt with it and we managed it all right so today we already can reap the benefits when we were thinking about the various university programs, we were thinking what we could offer to people um, compared to our competition. Uh, and it's not exactly easy to be in competition to the great four. And we wanted to see how to get the students here. The best thing was not to bring them here because that's a bit too demanding for them, but to go to see them. We started cooperating with the Vice Dean of Masaryk University, the Faculty of Economics and Management, who's really great, she's brilliant, and she helps us a lot. And we thought that our managers have a lot of great experience that could be used at the university that they could pass on to the students, and that way they could connect the studies with their future professional life so that the students could imagine what it's going to be like when they study but when they don't study anymore and what it's going to be like when they actually start working. Uh, the pictures show how we've organized our managers who lecture at Masaryk University, Faculty of Economics and Management. We always offer some topics to the university or the university actually asks us um, to include some topics and we are included in the syllabi so the students actually have this as um, compulsory lectures and the interest is great actually we we spoke about automation digitization indirect taxes customer service etc so quite interesting lectures for students we also participate in the top sec program for talented students. It always has a topic and the students come in in a group and there's a discussion on the topic and we pass on some experience. We spoke about digital marketing run by uh, a manager from uh, compressors 
I spoke about the HR topics, how to get your dream job. We tried to advise the students how to prepare for interviews, how to act at interviews, what mistakes not to make. And now we have another interesting event ahead of us, our open day on Thursday. We will have 100 students visiting. We've never had such a large number of students here. Um, which means we'll have to really adjust our spaces, prepare a huge auditorium for them, and we will have a lecture led by our um, CEO, a panel discussion focused on acquisitions and corporate uh, environment. It'll be in English because for the international students as well. We also, of course, have things for their students. The students will be able to bring their CVs. We will check them, give them feedback, whether it's good or not, you know, what, what could be interesting for recruiters, etc. So that's our open day. And what's also nice, and Magda already mentioned, we also do some volunteering. And not only with the university, we also try to encourage uh, employees. There's huge interest. We are cooperating with ADRA and many other NGOs. We partner with uh, Kertek, which is an organization um, helping at the oncological centers, especially for children. We gradually or we regularly participate in the volunteering days. We had 40 volunteers there who were helping to prepare this Children's Day there. And we have many events with Adra. We were trying to clean up. We were cleaning the open garden. We also cleaned up a garden in, a, in an elderly people's home. So it's not a team building of just sitting in a restaurant and playing bowling, but people actually are led to think on the values they have in life that although the sunshine isn't there every day and every time and everywhere people tend to think about things and it co-creates the company culture and it helps people to realize or think about the values perhaps reshuffle them and people realize that that the fact that something didn't turn out that well at work or in personal life. It's not such a tragedy as some other people may have in their lives. So I think that's very important. And that's why we are focusing on volunteering quite a lot. We also had uh, the support for Ukraine, the days uh, for Ukraine, and this was also uh, within our volunteering activities. What is a super event for the students that we have here? And uh, we need to thank uh, mainly the business area of compressor uh, technology is the Atlas Copco Services Award, which is the award for the students for their uh, diploma thesis. Uh, and uh, uh, we cooperate with uh, an external company which uh, ensures um, PR and websites where the students can, uh, can uh, register and nominate uh, when they are working on their bachelor or uh, bachelor thesis or uh, and the topic is uh, interesting and they would like to uh, get involved in this uh, contest uh, so they register and nominate it. Then we have to evaluate the registrations. We have to read all the theses. Uh, this year we had about 50 of them and a large group of managers read them. This um, this. Um, managerial group was uh, created here by us. Uh, they were managers who really uh, read uh, all the theses. Then they evaluated uh, the thesis and chose uh, be de 10 best ones. And then we invited uh, the students here and um, uh, we um, we awarded uh, the best three authors. Uh, we uh, prepared some refreshment for them and we spent a pleasant uh, afternoon all together and we awarded the three best, win best uh, uh, works. Uh, this uh, has has been done every year and this really very nicely resonates with the people because uh, we um, the people from the company read uh, the uh, 
uh, the the thesis, uh, and it is very interesting. Sometimes we when we had, for example, the topics of cryptocurrencies, and also for the managers in this area, uh, these topics are very enriching and uh, interesting. These efforts uh, were also. Um, uh, the appreciation of our customers last year, they called us from uh, LMC uh, and uh, they um, told us that we were um, nominated as uh, the fair employee with a good atmosphere. So it was not uh, our own uh, our, uh, our own nomination, but it was on the uh, um, on the basis of the evaluation of Atmos Atmoscope. We uh, uh, were third uh, w from within the employees uh, employers of uh, the Czech Republic, and uh, it was an excellent feedback for us that our employees uh, see it in this way, which was quite obvious at the beginning. And uh, this uh, award is, is also um, an evidence of this. Now I would like to stop. I would like to thank you for your attention and my colleague uh, Maruška, who is from my HR team, and uh, she also works uh, on the diversity with us. She will tell, uh, tell you about the diversity and our internal programs that we have for our employees and for our talents. Thank you for the floor. Uh, Leona has introduced the activities that we organized uh, for students, uh, for example, in cooperation with uh, the universities. And the next step is the cooperation with the people who are just at the beginning of their professional career. And it involves the actual employing of these people. The early career is uh, quite closely linked to the internal careers. We make effort to build uh, long term working relationships uh, and uh, over 50 percent uh, of open positions are taken by internal candidates. So uh, we have uh, the potential of the development uh, to uh, further senior positions and this is what employees in, uh, expect of us and they appreciate us for this because uh, they see the potential for their professional and personal development. We are the financial center and that's why I'd like to describe it. It is not only accounting, but we have uh, a lot of other teams here, such as uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, incoming invoice, uh, uh, invoice uh, processing, uh, the accounting team, uh, accounts receivables, accounts payable, internal control, financial management. So there is uh, a great uh, range of uh, areas. And in terms of early and internal career, it means that we can offer to the employee the path uh, through the company where they can get to the more senior position. This is the slide from from our internal website where our employees can find their own team and interactively they uh, see the positions which uh, they can uh, uh, consider for their further development uh, based on their uh, their uh, qualification and skills. So this is how they can plan their career. So now um, I have I did not manage to get the slide that I expected. Uh, so uh, on that slide, which is not here, uh, describe the positions which uh, in our financial center are, um, represent a typical career path for the employ employees. It doesn't have to be followed strictly. Some positions can be skipped uh, if uh, the uh, the employees uh, are uh, smart uh, or uh, they can uh, they don't have to go 
vertically in the career. They can expand their knowledge and uh, go uh, on um, go elsewhere. So it started with the AP administrator team, which is the processing of incoming invoices from the suppliers, and this is the team which is going to be most interested for us because uh, out of 100 percent, uh, we have students here. Um, and the next position, which uh, the people from AP administrators continue, are specialists who then deal with uh, the uh, suppliers. Um, uh, then there is an accountant, then there is an analyst, uh, and uh, very senior role is the business controller, which is the financial uh, director for our accounting uh, unit. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a very experienced uh, role. Uh, I would like to stop uh, at uh, the, the accounts payable administrator team. Uh, so this is a typical uh, position to which we expect uh, we recruit students. It is not the only one. In addition to the financial center, we have the customer care center, which also nicely cooperates with uh, the students. Uh, and uh, they provide internships, uh, so it is not the only team and the only area where we recruit students uh, to, uh, but this one is typical because we have 100 percent uh, of students. There are 18 students. They have a half-time job. Uh, together with this, they study their university. and. Uh, for us, uh, it is a very important talent talent pool, which we then use for re for recruiting most more senior roles. When I perceived and uh, these uh, people who work in this team, uh, so they are mainly people who uh, really work very hard uh, because if uh, they have to work half time and uh, at the same time uh, study at university, so they have to have a very good uh, time management, self organization, and uh, excellent uh, discipline. So they are really um, goal oriented oriented they are very well motivated and they always have contracts with us so they can uh, they can use all the benefits and all the vacations and mo most of them uh, take holiday uh, in order to write their fi their thesis which you can see uh, how uh, hard working they are uh, this team, if I think about what they, uh, what how they contribute to us, so it is these values uh, that I have just spoken about. And if I speak to them about why they had chosen Atlas Copco as their first employer, so f in the first place uh, they mention uh, the specific conditions uh, of work that we provide. So it is the um, possibility to work part time, um, part um, uh, time flex. This is most important for them, and this is what we can provide to them because uh, invoices are processed uh, electronically. Nothing is on the paper, so if they have uh, a two-hour break at uh, their uh, at their schools, so they can just uh, sit at the computer and uh, work. After they finish uh, their studies, uh, graduate from the university, so we uh, offer them the position of AP specialist, uh, which is then the full-time job, uh, which is uh, also the work uh, which uh, I was um, uh, recruited uh, to uh, 10 years ago, and uh, my colleagues were also part-time um, uh, students, uh, and it is really refreshing. These AP specialists, uh, it is the first job after the school. It is a full-time job, and when I spoke about uh, the administrators um, uh, and asked them uh, what motivated them to stay there, uh, to work here full time so it was that uh, that um, uh, it was a very friendly collective and this is also what these uh, mothers uh, in the video mentioned uh, uh, so this is really appreciative um, uh, number two was that it is uh, the work uh, in the field they studied that uh, that is the com connection of uh, uh, theory and practice that we offer also language courses and uh, 
other possibilities uh, of um, um, of uh, acquiring more qualification. I have to remember the slide that hasn't been displayed here. So um, uh, why do we want them to stay with us? Uh, so it is quite obvious. Uh, there are people who, uh, who uh, fit uh, well within the uh, company corporate culture. They know very well their colleagues. Uh, and so this is an important talent pool uh, for us, uh, which we can then use for recruiting other um, positions. The Every uh, everyday work with the people at the beginning of the careers, careers, um, uh, they are our immediate colleagues, and in addition to everyday, we also have some programs uh, uh, designed uh, which uh, emphasize and ac um, amplify the the cooperation so it is one is the graduate program finance uh, finance liaison and uh, this is a traditional graduate program for uh, in brno for one on two people and uh, in uh, um, in another center for one or two people and within this program they will be four positions gradually which uh, these people will um, g go through uh, one is the uh, international one, and uh, uh, the goal is to educate the business controller, which will be, who will be the uh, the the manager of the business unit. Uh, so this is how you can start the career and quite intensely, and to accelerate and to get uh, quite fast and quite far in the finance area. It is a selective um, or program. We expect only one or two. Uh, participants and in addition to this program we also organized our um, Brno program which is uh, focused on intern uh, in and graduates. Uh, the intern program is uh, current students who we expect to work uh, part-time and uh, there is a great potential for them to move to the graduate program, which is the program which is uh, already for the graduates uh, um, maximum two years after the end of the studies. And in the graduate program, we expect that it would last uh, three years. Uh, these programs currently uh, are being prepared. Uh, we are preparing the educational programs uh, and the co their content. Uh, so we are going to um, start them. The intern program will be more unified and it will be focused on the person and uh, the first uh, work. Uh, so it will be some basic uh, habits, uh, time management, uh, um, communication skills. And this is what uh, what uh, is fits uh, every uh, department. Uh, it will not be it will be unified. Then the graduate program, which will be spe more specialized, uh, focused on the specialized skills, and um, uh, for people to uh, be uh, to um, uh, have more uh, more um, uh, information about the careers. So these are our local programs, which we, we look at. Uh, in order to intensify, I think this is about as much as I was uh, planning to say. So thank you for your intention. And I would like to give the floor to our uh, MC. Thank you for the presentation. Without the presentation, I could just picture the slides um, from what you were speaking of. At this point, I would like to give you some space for any questions, if you have any. Or questions popped up on Slido. Are there any in order to make the conditions for the company? So depending on the percentage of the part-time job, the mum or the dad get a contribution to cover the private kindergarten fees. Any other questions? I'd like to ask perhaps when you spoke about the mums, I think the programs are marvellous. If I were a mum, I would have loved to work here then. Uh, just something about the flexible and part-time jobs. How are you doing in speaking with managers uh, to actually co tolerate these things in their workplace? Because it's it might be, it's a, probably a bit more work to combine all those part-times. Their motivation is, of course, 
to work with people they know, to work with people who've been on the team before. They only, they, they basically just go on. And what motivated us uh, also is the situation on the labor market, especially in the financial areas. And we are doing quite well. Uh, I think all of us understand the situation and they know that if the mom uh, leaves for three years and then comes back, it'll be difficult for us and for her because many things change in three years time. Automation, etc., all the technical gadgets and developments are great and it is good for the manager as well as the mum not to interrupt the contact because that way the mums are in the loop, they are maintaining their knowledge. Sometimes it's difficult to coordinate. It's true, we have a role which is actually covered by three mums and it's even so not full time, but there are activities that are sort of auxiliary or administrative. Um, these are the point one, point two um, part times, which, which the mums actually do from home. I cannot imagine a mum working here with this type of uh, employment and and leaving their child just for a few hours. If the mums don't want to or if it doesn't fit them to actually come here to the office, they don't have to and they can work from home. I have to have a, a small comment on behalf of a business for society on the topic of parenthood and parents at work. And, and the approach of the signatories of the diversity charter uh, is that this is the most successful diversity charter program and dozens of uh, signatories have great innovative practice and as you're going to hear in the following panels, um, the programs begin even before parent leave when the future mum actually informs the employer that she will be leaving for parental leave, the programs are launching already and they are including the mums during maternity and parental leave throughout the end, um, which is quite unique in the Czech Republic and the best cooperation is within the charter, the diversity charter companies. We've discussed this a lot last week the uh, Mothers and Fathers Welcome Conference, where the public administration should actually take over this practice of responsible companies and implement it in the national policies, in the laws, see um, as about, you know, concerning the debate of work-life balance, etc. And the DPP part-time work agreements. This is our goal for this year, to keep strengthening and pushing for the dialogue towards the state administration so that they would, they would listen to responsible companies and um, taking over the practice. We've heard that the practice quite it's quite unique within these companies, which means I that's what I want to say. We're speaking about the best of the best in this area, in this community on the labor market. And perhaps something about the dads on um, parental leave um, we asked in our survey in connection with the conference whether they've encountered any comments from their friends or peers or colleagues and so on that if a father is on parental leave whether it meant to that they are weak or or somehow less valued and about 45% have answered that they have encountered this situation. And one of the ways of helping or trying to break um, uh, these prejudices, and I can say so uh, in uh, from my own experience, that we've also tried to switch when my children were small and we were um, bringing up our daughters, the fathers on parent leave, um, are something quite normal or that it should be perceived as such. It's very manly actually to take care of your children and it should become a standard situation. 
we shouldn't speak only about individual units, but perhaps dozens or hundreds of thousands. Sweden is an example. Uh, Atlas Copco is a Swedish company. Parental leave is set in such a way that it motivates both parents to um, enter parental leave and the state actually creates inclusive conditions, including the financial conditions, which is of course key. That has to be achieved here and support companies to uh, create these inclusive companies for par or inclusive conditions for parents. I would conclude this uh, section. Our slight delay is still relatively cultivated. Therefore, I would uh, just give you a chance for a small break and in five minutes we will reconvene again. Please have coffee and some refreshments now. So uh, we have to start. Uh to be able to keep to the time schedule. This panel, which uh, we have now prepared, so we are going to share a good practice. Uh, we have several more companies or representatives of more companies, and we are going to talk about the topics uh, which we have already touched upon today, which is the age diversity, support of pa uh, of uh, parents uh, and uh, people who care for somebody, then uh, the uh, G LGBT plus uh, topic. Uh, I will not be here alone. There will be uh, four um, or five uh, speakers here. First of all, I would like to ask uh, uh, Leona Buchtová from Atlas Copco Services. Uh, we will also invite Eva Drgačová, who is an HR business partnering CEE for Velax Czech Republic Slovakia. Renata Millerová, who is the HR director for the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Poland, uh, uh, HR um, and Serbia, Thermo Fisher Scientific. Tomáš Ondroušek, who is the HR uh, country leader for Kindril uh, Czechia. So this will be a uh, um, um, uh, uh, gentlemen's club and uh, Radana Kubánikova, who is an HR uh, in uh, Continental Barum uh, company. She's used to men, so she has been seated between the men. I will ask uh, questions. Uh, or I will ask uh, one question and then you will ask questions uh, and we will also collect some questions from Slido. So my first question is uh, the business environment uh, as um, in its entirety is uh, oriented on performance, uh, on results. Uh, how can it be matched with the situation when uh, the workplaces uh, or where are with people uh, who are limited uh, in some ways uh, who um, who can be uh, who can have some obstacles in their work uh, first of all i I think uh, that we should not be talking about limits. Uh, we are all talking about the diversity, and the reason is uh, that it is uh, uh, it is it has been proven by the data and by the numbers that the uh, that the uh, diversity. And, changes. and this is what uh, many companies need to um, to uh, keep uh, the leading positions in the labor markets. So that's one thing. And the second thing is what I, as an HR, have to say, and I am here also on behalf of the business uh, side. Uh, uh, we are all pragmatics. Uh, we need to focus uh, on all groups who are available in the labor market because we know what the situation is in the Czech labor market in the long term. So we know that the diversity uh, also brings about the possibility to uh, to 
acquire people uh, into the companies who um, in the past wouldn't be able to work there. Uh, the goal is to uh, present the environment which is open to all uh, communities and uh, Also, people with uh, different handicaps uh, uh, can be integrated and uh, they are employable, but it is necessary to create the right uh, job position for them. I would like to add to what Renata has said. Uh, in my opinion, the main thing is the corporate culture. If the company supports it and teaches uh, its managers and team leaders to to uh, impact the people and uh, the people see that uh, the teams cooperate and the company runs well in this area, so the people don't have a feeling that um, uh, there is something different. Uh, and the handicap is not visible if uh, anybody doesn't make it uh, visible. So the people are kind of uh, operating his uh, naturally and uh, it needs to be uh, taken into consideration. I've had uh, also some experience uh, from other companies and uh, in our company, this runs very well, but it is not the case for everybody. There are still some barriers in the companies who are set up in a slightly different uh, way, uh, whether uh, it uh, it depends uh, on the country the company comes came from, and they have some limits. Uh, but um, we should mainly teach uh, the management of the company to be able to work with this, and then it it operates much better in the company. I'd like to follow up uh, what uh, the ladies has, have said. Uh, basically, uh, diversity is uh, crucial for the performance of the company. By investments uh, in the diverse environment and support of uh, inclusion of all the people into this diverse environment uh, will finally bring a win situation, but not everybody knows it in the company that uh, this investment, uh, investment pays off. For us, uh, the key group uh, is the managers and all the employees, uh, and this is the uh, area which we have to, which we as HR people have to work with. So, number one is to create the environment uh, which will enable everybody to uh, feel safe in the company and. Uh, to help the company uh, for better results, for better performance. And number two is uh, what you can use uh, uh, guides uh, for through the uh, work with the managers uh, through some enablements. And, uh, and uh, number two is the comparing of the starting line because uh, not everybody has the baseline uh, the same as the others. So. If you identify the group uh, which are uh, kind of falling behind uh, or lacking something, so you focus on them by providing them uh, with training or you invest in their education or skills uh, in order for them to be competitive also in the labor market. Everything that has been said here uh, is uh, has my support. Uh, the only, I would like to only say uh, an example that not everything can be dealt with um, simply and quickly. Um, uh, our company is. Um, uh, uh, the product manufacturing company, uh, 5,400 are in an un un uninterrupted time schedule and not everything can be done quickly. It is about corporate culture and it is mainly that uh, also managers and foremen support us uh, who are crucial for us and I'm glad that they understand this thing. And we are probably the biggest employee in the Zlin regions. And uh, when there was a, a shortage, shortage of, um, uh, of um, um, people, so we had uh, 400 applicants and we needed uh, just 10. Now the situation is opposite uh, and uh, the employers who have not uh, uh, adopted the trend, which is here today, um, uh, they, uh, they are uh, falling behind. 
Velax is the last one, but it is definitely working with managers because, in my opinion, the managers are those who do the uh, the work with the, in the teams because they are in constant contact with uh, the employees. We can't be in everyday contact with every employee uh, on uh, on part of HR. It is about the corporate culture. It is about the values in Velux. Uh, one of the main uh, values is the respect to each other. So as we uh, treat uh, one another, or one uh, wh how other treat us, uh, so we want to uh, we want to be treated as um, as we want uh, uh, want to treat other people. Now is your chance to join the discussion. For those of you who are here in the room, feel free to raise your hand, you'll get a microphone. Or, of course, uh, if you're uh, online, you can send your questions via Slido. Okay, so here's a question, great. The speaker doesn't use a microphone, so we cannot hear the question, I apologize. I will try to react together with my colleague Anna Cherninova, who's sitting over there, um, a member of our HR team. Last year, we focused on the uh, handicapped employees and their situation in the companies. It's an important group of employees for us um, with whom we wanted to work. We created a mini team, an employee uh, named Marek who used to work in IT and he's blind and his manager, Jana, as our HR partner, tried to pick up this topic and focus on the basic uh, areas of functioning for handicapped employees within the company. I have to say that we've uh, found a lot of different barriers and obstacles along the way but it actually led us to founding the business resource group. Um, actually, a voluntary group of employees who focus on a specific topic. And this group of um, handicapped employees within the company, within IT, we called the company, we called the group Breaking the Barriers because we did find many barriers and obstacles and and Marek as a blind person within a company that focuses on the software being also um, adjusted to um, handicapped employees meant that uh, one of our long-term goals was to uh, try to make the ch necessary changes to make this experience possible for everyone we have a similar experience. We were afraid what our colleagues and managers would uh, say about that, but ultimately it wasn't difficult with them. The only ones who did make it a bit difficult for us were the firemen and the um, health and security or health and safety people. We have a person without um, limbs and then we have a, uh, an employee who doesn't hear and he has to move around in the production hall, uh, which can be quite dangerous because there's lots of moving machinery, but we manage nonetheless. I just wanted to add that for us, it's also a topic for the future because so far we've been focusing on extra benefits rather than working with people with handicaps because we are not a typical, typically usable or suitable company who could employ people. We have some with physical handicaps and we have one uh, person who is uh, hard of hearing. We had a small discussion during the break about that. It's a call to action really, that those things that we think that if the building is approved by all those authorities, then it means that it's barrier free. Well, it was a huge, aha moment when a lady who's on a wheelchair was coming um, and I reflected uh, her journey to our supposedly barrier-free building and how she couldn't go through the carousels. She had to go around the building about half a kilometer to the main entrance where, of course, if she didn't have a phone, 
she could be waving and knocking at the reception because there is no bell. Um, so I only reflected her Jenny and that it's a sort of an appeal or a call to action that we still have a lot of catching up to do and a great bias about being able to employ people with special needs, but um, it would be good to actually have an audit, first of all, before we start having these great ideas, um, before we actually decide that we would start employing such people um, that would actually make it possible for them to work there. Do people uh, actually apply themselves or do you have to communicate with some organizations? We never had any active uh, employees or any active um, applicants for jobs and we didn't know really whether we were doing something wrong or whether we are not presenting ourselves as a company that would make it possible or are we not the right employer. Just a short commentary. I think for handicapped people it's um, also a question of the company presenting itself as a company willing and prepared to employ such people. I've been in touch with companies which have gone on a much longer journey in this area and I know that the recommended practice is to find a partner and design the workplace in cooperation with that partner. I know that um, Chesobe Bank and other banks work that way who have been focusing on diversity and I think it's a more suitable journey for a company to uh, find a partner, find a target group you wish to support. We do get some applicants directly from the labor market. They're not hundreds, they're rather units. And we always find the um, question of uh, the individual design of, um, of an interview because the the conditions are always different. There are people who are visually impaired, who are hearing impaired. We had a person in a wheelchair and each time I see that it's something of um, individual accompaniment and it takes up a lot of capacity. So a partnership with a specialized organization is always suitable. And I think it can help you also within the, the environment. I think it's it's uh, an issue. It's it's. To, to actually design the environment within. And we would always tend to think that our barrier-free buildings are indeed barrier-free while they're actually not. Um, and therefore, it's always best to get in touch with a specialized organization who would audit uh, your area and tell you. I would uh, recommend an organization called Capo who does these audits. Um, they focus on people with various handicaps. We've had some cases here where we've helped even short term um, in, with short term employment, uh, but we don't have that much um, experience. We do have limits. We cooperated with uh, the wheelchair bound people's league who carried out this audit and we've discovered various uh, obstacles and barriers and always you need to figure these things out in advance. However, you can help these people uh, in different ways. We were, for example, uh, supporting the education of a guide dog in this building and that is also a way of supporting people with a handicap. I would just like to add that we are a production company. We cannot afford to uh, employ people with serious handicaps, but we cover this by cooperating with the NGOs, by purchasing uh, products from them, cooperating with the charity who run the projects for uh, people with handicaps. And you can always find some ways uh, to cooperate. If there are no other questions, we could come back to age diversity. We've already mentioned it uh, in Leona's presentation, 
And at this point, uh, I'd like to ask um, the others, what are the situations in your companies? In Velox, the, the age uh, range is really broad from the generation only at the beginning of their profession life down to the generation of 55 plus. It's a question for managers. It's a challenge for them to be able to grasp this diversity in the team. Working with young people who don't, who might not feel such loyalty mm -hmm. to the company who've been there for 25 years. They've, you know, they are used to breathe for the company, just live for it. And now there, there are people who don't have these priorities, who demand greater work-life balance. So we focus on these topics. And at the same time, we look at the older generations. We have sandwich generation. We have youngsters but at the same time we have to start look we have to start caring for our parents so those are the challenges too our situation is similar and i must say that uh, we have had 150 years of continental then uh, there was 99 year of for the start of the serial production of tires 55 years uh, of uh, the company for uh, production of tires and other ones. Uh, so we've had a very long tradition as well. And we have also the same values as Atlas Copco. And uh, I also encounter what my colleague has described. Uh, at the, uh, at, uh, in, the 70, in the 1970s, we has had our own apprenticeship school and now people are uh, retiring uh, from our company who had worked uh, there for 45, 50 years. So this is uh, what uh, our situation is and three generations uh, meet uh, in our workplace. Uh, and the question is how to communicate with them and how to make benefits to satisfy all of them. Even the cafeteria is uh, quite um, uh, successful in our case. We invest a lot of uh, lot uh, there, and uh, young uh, people can choose to go to the gym, and uh, the older ones can go to the spas uh, or to the wellness center, and the parents uh, can uh, get uh, contribution to the summer camps of their children. Uh, in Zlin, uh, there is also a conference uh, which uh, which is called Phenomenon, and there the age management is um, is uh, uh, dealt with uh, a lot and i must say that without flexibility that we offer uh, also in our company as uh, it, it will not be possible to do without ergonomy uh, which is the adjustment of the work environment uh, for everybody to be able to do the work, uh, an old person, a young person, a wo woman, or somebody with a handicap. And we also have to uh, offer software to four men uh, for them to be helped uh, to organize their work uh, so that they can can come to work and know. Frantische comes for two shifts, Indrishka for one shift. This one has is working hard half time and this is really quite difficult for the foreman to handle all this and still uh, speak to the employer employees i'd like to speak first about um, Kindril as a company has been in the market for one year so we don't have uh, uh, the fifth, 150 years but we used to be part of ibm uh, so uh, we are an IBM spin-off company, so the diversity inclusion is uh, important for IBM, and that's why for um, for Kindrill as well. I have worked for eight years uh, for the company, and I have always looked at the age um, and uh, the aging is uh, going on. The average age used to be 34. Now we are getting to 40. The company is um, is uh, uh, being enlarged and it's more spread. Uh, most people are between 30 to 50 and the rest uh, is uh, a smaller ratio. But as you have mentioned, you have to work with all the groups and you have to uh, adjust to them the portfolio of the benefits. 
For the younger generation, flexibility is the key work. So it is flexible work, or, uh, ways of work, uh, hybrid or uh, remote uh, possibility of work. And uh, what has been um, uh, asked me uh, if uh, recently, if somebody could work for two months from Canary Islands. Uh, uh, it's really an, an actual question. Uh, we have to look at it, and this is the future because young people uh, are searching for flexibility, maybe the values, but uh, this is uh, uh, you have to have, for example, my generation, which is. Uh, which is open to different things. For example, the pension um, pension uh, savings uh, schemes are what young people um, like. Um, and so you have to really adjust the environment of the company for each generation to be feeling well in there. And uh, this is what we try to do. At the end, uh, I would like to speak about the uh, the between generations uh, differences. It's not about that they wouldn't understand each other. They do. Uh, this is not an issue. But in our company, the problem is uh, to get uh, the older people to a certain certain level so that they can catch up with the technical development. If we talk about the accounting teams, uh, it's been just a few years uh, when they managed with calculator. Pe pe uh, pen and uh, paper uh, then uh, they needed excel then better better excel than and then other tools and robots uh, and it is something that uh, the people from the older generation they have to identify with and often in our financial teams uh, this sometimes causes uh, an issue. We should not uh, underestimate uh, uh, instant control over these people in terms of the their education, qualification, willingness, and motivation to learn these new things at this age. This is also important. Everything has been said here. So for me, uh, the age management is a topic which we have chosen for this year. So it is something that we are starting to look at more systematically. My approach is always such uh, that I start uh, on the basis of the data uh, basis, uh, data material. So currently we are collecting and modulate, mo moderating some trends uh, within the company. I've had a very interesting interview um, uh, recommended to me by um, Associate Professor Rashticova regarding uh, age management organizations which uh, uh, deal with this topic because I was trying to find some market data, market development, and we all will need a kind of business justification, uh, of some levels above you. Uh, so it, you need to uh, create the why and to raise interest uh, in uh, investing, whether of time or funds. And this is a kind of presumption of mine when I look at the demography where the Czech Republic will be in, let's say, 10 years, where the labor market will be. So what I want to say that what is working well on the uh, young generations, which is uh, which are different programs and uh, issue and things uh, so i perceive it in a uh, in the opposite way that in the life cycle of the employee at the end we are going to slow down and perhaps design some internship programs for people who have uh, given uh, given uh, so much to the company, but they don't want to uh, give more, but they can be useful uh, in some respects, but maybe not working full time. And I also think that uh, it will be very important to exploit uh, the the, the uh, people who, um, who have uh, the leaders in them and who want to pass on their knowledge. All those uh, there sometimes there are some uh, there is a bias um, that uh, such uh, elderly uh, employers employees have some uh, bad habits which uh, they should not be uh, passing on to their successors. But uh, is this cannot be generalized? This can. Uh, but the, how do we approach this? We should employ requalifications. Uh, Erwin Dobrovsky also. 
um, also uh, mentioned this, and uh, this is if companies uh, don't go in this direction, they will st start losing the potential candidates uh, at the la in the labor, labor market. how they operate. Also, the health uh, is not uh, health is uh, also a deteriorating of the people, and uh, so we have our program uh, um, complemented by some rehabilitation and uh, health uh, uh, focused uh, methods. For example, we have a senior program in uh, the Luhačovice Spa, where we uh, give uh, an extra week uh, to people over 50 in uh, uh, the uh, Luhačovice Spas, um, and this is quite normal. So the rest is also necessary, and uh, the, uh, the kind of supervision over us to protect our health uh, it is quite uh, necessary. Uh, it will not be like at my grandmother's who uh, retired at 54. I don't work uh, in um, uh, the in the manufacturing industry, but I would also appreciate uh, to go to go um, to go um, as uh, the uh, uh, if you have maybe some vouchers. Uh, uh, vouchers, uh, so I, we can provide you some, but you should perhaps do some volunteering work. Uh, in, uh, do you have any questions? Nobody seems. Uh, I would be interested in terms of the re uh, retirements because it is a politically current topic, uh, burning issue. Because the state uh, can set up uh, the uh, the uh, when the when people will retire, but um, flexible companies and responsible companies can do it differently, and they know they know what to do with it. Uh, there could be some uh, flexible benefits uh, for and flexible transition programs for elderly or oldest oldest uh, people. So are you only uh, only researching this? It is uh, quite a new topic which we have to deal with it. Uh, but for Velax, uh, I have, for example, the uh, service technicians who have to go on the roofs, uh, roofs, and they install and uh, service these Velax um, uh, Velax uh, windows. And um, there are sixty-eight uh, or so, so they can't do this. And if they their health is uh, impaired. Uh, so uh, we um, we recruit somebody or we hire somebody from outside who help uh, these technicians. Uh, but uh, now we need to deal with um, uh, how to how to uh, deal with it because they have uh, problems with uh, the bags, uh, etc. Uh, so what do we do? We sometimes uh, move these uh, people to an administrative position, but uh, we also need to uh, educate the person to be able to work with all the systems and the burning issue is also uh, English uh, because who have worked uh, for 20, 25 years with the company, they speak some English and they are able to communicate uh, uh, with the technicians, uh, but uh, they can't uh, deal with uh, or communicate with our Danish branch uh, or um, do the papers in English, uh, uh, etc. So we need to educate them so that they are ready for work in the older age. So this is the practice in Velax. A short uh, um, a note about the age diversity and what you have been speaking about. So, what should resonate more and what should help to the res help the responsible business is uh, and um, with respect to the increasing of the age uh, age level uh, of a retirement, uh, which is necessary but needs to be well communicated. So there are some topics which need to be um, developed also by the state. It is the second and third carrier in order to standardize it because it's normal that people at work change the carriers, uh, that it is normal both in uh, private and 
and public sector. The public sector is not doing anything in this respect, which is a mistake. And uh, the age, uh, um, age limit, uh, if, um, if we have like the range of six uh, or eight years, like Sweden has 20, 62 to 68, and there are some uh, bonuses on this. Uh, so the, the la la later they go, uh, they retire, the better bonuses they have. And if we speak about the intergenerational dialogue, so it is mentoring. Mentoring is a normal tool. It is a normal uh, practice in responsible companies and uh, in the private sector, but uh, it is a pity that mentoring is not taken officially. If we had uh, the position of a mentor in the catalog of jobs, uh, so in the uh, generation, uh, so we would make a, a huge uh, leap forward uh, uh, that uh, we will aut automatically uh, count uh, on uh, the situation when the people, um, older people at the end of uh, their careers would be mentors, whether for their original company or for a new company. And this should become a commonplace. So this is uh, just consideration uh, of in the contact to the public. Uh. How are we doing with time? Can we open one more topic? Mm. We are doing relatively well, including our delay. We have 15 more minutes. Great. So let us open it. Well, 10 minutes then. I'm wondering well, how are the other companies doing in working with the LGBT plus as um, Atlas Copco mentioned it whoever feels like speaking up age management is a topic is a serious topic for us we have 5400 employees it's a statistically significant um, example or sample and our approach is the same as Atlas Copco mentioned in the morning. I'm actually interested also to hear how other companies are approaching it. I think Leonard described it brilliantly, the approach and the one we are trying to go for as well. We have a group called KIN, an interest group that is interested in this topic. We try to support them by various visual things, such as um, participating in Prague Pride Parade. But the group certainly gathers those who are interested in speaking about it. But then there are those who don't prefer the topic to be spoken of. They have some blogs. I think coming out is a per is an important um, milestone for many people, and they have to take some time before they actually get as far. So we have a special leader who focuses on this area and organizes various discussions and events within the company. And those are also questions of um, modifying the work environment or a symbol which is meant not just for men and women but other sexes too um, and that may help people to feel a bit better but the, the topics have to be ripe it's a long it's a thing in the long run there's always a small group of people who is very noisy very loud if you go way too far so it is better to focus one time at one topic and move it a bit and then it will become a standard for the rest of the population and that's how we try to approach it. I have a tip for you. I saw a great aha moment when we started cooperating with the Pride Business Forum. They said that people are who within the LGBT plus community, they um, are often timid to ask for something. And someone came to me uh, and asked for a day off for a wedding, as it is in the law. And in Velax, 
I realized that people are afraid to speak. They need a safe environment. So I did something very simple this year after agreeing with management and our uh, regulations include that if you are registered partnership, you also get a day off for your wedding, just like anyone else. And I think it's great that Atlas Copco has the two weeks parental leave, um, even for same sex couples. So here you can see the uh, good practice sharing uh, in real time. We have also uh, acceded to the Business Pride Forum. And uh, I can also say that this topic um, is interesting. I, I was interested in to, to see the results of the questionnaire. It has confirmed um, what I see and live, uh, what experience, what I experience around me. It's a topic that is very difficult for the Czech society. I think there are many good companies who are really ahead, getting ahead, such as Vodafone. If you look at their campaigns, who um, cause a lot of controversy, and I think it's good that there is controversy because then um, they get spoken of. And at the same time, they're saying, what is normal? When you recall the campaign of the so-called Czech family with the uh, rainbow kids, Asian kids who are born in the Czech Republic, speak perfectly well Czech, go to a Czech school. Uh, so the bias are great, what I liked. Uh, there was this, an anti-campaign um or where the their ceo reacted to all the anti campaigns and i think um it's important to say well not to push don't make them an exclusive community actually but basically naturally build up the culture within the company so that even this community feels well at work if they go to the bathroom, that they should feel that they're not perceived as foreigners or that they've walked into the wrong door. They shouldn't be faced with um, incorrect comments. I think, um, I think we all have an LGBT plus community within the company. There are people just like us, but they just perceive their gender differently or their life. And it shouldn't mean any limitation in their work capabilities. And so what I did was that I just set the um, days off as stipulated by law. That's a minimum that any company can do that because it's a very harmless process with minimum um, influence in your budgets basically by saying that what is available to heterogeneous couples uh, would be also available to same couples same-sex couples or unmarried couples because the law often speaks about marriage and there are so many people living in unmarried couples and therefore it's good to think about the working conditions being uh, quite unified. The paternity uh, leave is in its way uh, a discriminatory term. They are just two weeks of an employee's life which can actually make their private life uh, more pleasant than that's the minimum that the company can do for these people. Um, and basically you should just try to make sure that these people are just feeling okay. The greatest um, benefit for me was that I came closer to the perception of these communities and we also um, came to learn about the various tools. 
uh, about the audit of the workplace. Perhaps uh, don't do, do it intuitively, but rather cooperate with experts who know what they're speaking about, what to look for, etc. And they will guide you through the whole process. They will audit your conditions and you can then choose whether you want international toilets now or um, later on or if you want to provide your employees with days off um, and so on. Just find out, learn, don't push it. That's it from myself. I hope that the registered paternity leave will be extended when we've had this uh, great inspiration. Um, and I'm writing down, okay, audit initiative and gradually that's what I gathered from the approach to this topic so we have five last minutes not those not that many questions please now perhaps just one or two I've been thinking about what I should ask uh, I've heard it's important to have data what type of metrics you have set into in order to measure a successfully inclusive environment. What other metrics are you using within your companies? This year, for the first time, we uh, included the Global Employee Satisfaction Survey. There's a chapter of the inclusion. Um, how do they? How do they perceive our company? Is it inclusive enough? Uh, we've been quite successful between 90 and 100 points because Velux as a Scandinavian company has the diversity and inclusion and acceptance of various communities in its DNA, really. So that's our metrics where the, the employees are satisfied. And then we also have metrics um, run by management as any company. We have even our employee recruitment diversity uh, measures. This is a topic uh, very often in production companies. In this company, not so much. We don't have these problems. But we also have metrics for management. That means roles that are leading roles not just managers, but team leaders as well. We are quite successful somewhere around 60%, which I think is a relatively good figure. And then we are following many, many things in early career. Just based on the programs, you have to look at the people going on from their studies further. And we will be following and monitoring also the topic for this year, which is probably the late career. We'll have to still have a think about that. We are really following early career, internships, all the data from the sources coming from the universities, the transition from student to employee. We are following the diversity, monitoring the seniority, promotability, employee turnover, diversity metrics. And we're also following figures of the development of uh, other benefits and people with handicaps and also modeling trends when it comes to the aging of our population and we want to really fit it to the market data so that we could build some sort of business case on that. And we're of course monitoring the number of working parents, i.e. how many of the total people we have on maternity leave are working during that time. Okay, taking over the baton, um, the metrics we've got are very similar. Diversity hiring, diversity attrition, the ratio of women in the company, the ratio of women in management, 
where perhaps compared to others we are not as successful. For example, now we've rolled out a new program that focuses on uh, moving, shifting women to leadership programs in uh, greater numbers. I've been toying with an idea that these indicators are quite simple. You can read the basics, but it doesn't tell you much. If you have one team full of women and the other team full of men, it's great on average. You've very achieved the average, but it doesn't fulfill the goal because the, the diversity isn't there unless these two teams closely cooperate. So even the metrics actually require some further reflection and thought. Yeah, we've got it all. But in order, well, not to forget the diversity charter, we also follow the nationality coefficients, what nationality is, where do these people come from, because that's also connected with the efficiency. It's a bit complicated in production. If you work with people who don't understand Czech, you need to have ambassadors who help with translation or interpreting. We have customer audits and norms. They are very, very tough on the translations of all documentations, health and safety, etc. So these are also important figures for us in the whole company. So they are not only indicators in the management, but these indicators should be uh, known uh, through um, along the vertical line. So we have 12 o'clock sharp, so it is an ideal time to com close this panel. I'd like to thank the speakers, Leona Buchtová, Eva Drgačová, Renata Milerová, and uh, uh, others, uh, uh, Tomáš Ondroušek, Radana Kubáníková and uh, for them being here. And now I would like to invite first Pavel Stern and Kamila Chubanova for uh, the company Business Pro Společnost. Uh, I would like to ask them to formally close this uh, event. Uh, just a brief conclusion. I think it was very interesting. I'd like to thank Atlas Copco Services for providing us uh, their hospitality. I hope everybody is full of inspiration. We have shared a lot of experience. Uh, it was excellent and we'll be looking forward to uh, further cooperation with you, not only in Brno. As Camilla has said, thank you very much. I believe it was inspiring for you. It was a really a networking meeting, and uh, it was about uh, it, it was the forum about diversity and inclusion. Uh, there were a lot of topics mentioned here. Uh, they were very nicely uh, seen on the non-displayed uh, slides. Uh, uh, I hope it was interesting also for our online friends, and uh, we would like to invite invite you uh, to the highlights of uh, the diversity season, uh, which is the European Month of Diversity, which starts in in May. And uh, on the 26th of May, there will be the European Diversity Day. We would like to invite you all. We'll be communicating more information to you. Uh, and just uh, in addition to uh, the uh, to the traditional event in the Chamber of Deputies under the auspices of Marketa Adamo Pekarova Adamova, there will be interesting workshops uh, focused on the diversity highlights, uh, and there will be positions uh, topics like the position of women in the market, trans paying transparency, and work life balance directives. So I am getting back to this topic now. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank all the technical staff for uh, for this um, for ensuring this. Uh, I would like to thank Camilla who uh, had who did a lot to organize this event. I would like to thank uh, Atlas Copco team for their support and organization. And we are looking forward to further cooperation. I'd like to uh, also ask uh, Peter to uh, to ask. Uh, director uh, to uh, close this meeting so please would you uh, would you be so kind and close this 
It was very pleasant. It was my honor and pleasure to have you all here, also online. We'll have some refreshment uh, now, and uh, those of you who would like to look at our new floors, I would be happy to guide you through them, and thank you once again. I'll join my colleague, colleagues and thank everybody as well. It's always great to have the colleagues from other companies, from other organizations. The sharing is excellent in many areas. The diversity is not an exception. Thank you for coming. We'll be happy to see you again.